Okay guys, so today I'm going to teach you two different things that you need to know in order to um, submit your final research paper. So first is you have to create in-text citations with every quote that you use. And second, at the bottom of your paper, you're going to have to create a work cited page. So let's talk about in-text citations. So if you look at this red thing at the bottom, it says words worth 263. That's an in-text citation. So every time that you have a quote, you have to cite who said it and then where you got it. So there's two ways to cite quotes in a paper. Option one, you can insert the quote by itself, and then you include the author's last name and page number after the quote. Here's what that looks like. So romantic poetry is characterized by some writers as the quote, spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. And then the author's last name, Wordsworth, page number 263, go in parentheses after that quote. Notice I didn't hit page or P in front of the number. I just put the number. Option two um, looks more like this. So you, first, you could use the author's name when you introduce the quote, and then after the quote, you could simply include the page number. So here's what that looks like. William Wordsworth, a famous British poet, stated that romantic poetry was marked by a, quote, spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. And then in parentheses, I just put 263. And this is because I don't need to use his last name here because I put it up here before my quote. Now you're probably wondering, well, what if I don't know the author? My website doesn't have an author. When, there, a, when there's a source that has no author, you put the article title and page number in parentheses. So instead of the author, in parentheses, I just put the article title in quote marks and then the page number. But on many websites, there's no page number. Unless it's a PDF, there's not gonna be a page number. So if there's no page number, then you use this formula, author's last name plus article title. So example, I'm not gonna read this long quote here, but at the bottom, you can see in red, it's the author's last name, Smith, and then quote, impact of global warming, in parentheses. And that was the article title. Okay, so next, we're gonna talk about works cited page, but first I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I opened up, um, the first paper I saw here was me mics. So let's see, I'm gonna find a quote. Okay, so right here I see he's got a quote in his paper. So I'm gonna go after the quote, I'm gonna click parentheses, and I actually uh, copied and pasted this into Google and found that it came from this article right here. It was from ESPN.com, and it was this article called Next Level, and I see that there was an author here, Peter Keating. He's an ESPN senior writer. So I'm gonna go back here, and in parentheses, I'm gonna write the last name of the author, Keating, and there's no article title, so I'm gonna put, or I'm sorry, there's no page number, so I'm going to use the article title, Next Level, and I put that in quote marks. Then I end my parentheses, and then I put a period after it, so I'm gonna get rid of this period right here. Okay, and so um, Mimek has to do that for all of the other quotes in his paper. All right, next let's talk about a works cited page. Okay, so your works cited page is gonna be a separate page. This is where you give the full citation of where you found your research information, and we're gonna start by writing works cited and centering it. So it's gonna look like this. Let me make this larger for you. It's gonna look like this. Okay, so you have works cited in the center, um, you have your, obviously, your header up here with your last name and the page number. And then you have these weird things here. These are your citations. Well, you don't have to learn how to do this anymore because the website does it for you. So let me show you how to do that. So there's two websites you can use. One is this one. It's called citationmachine.net. And another one is called easybib.com. They're very similar. You can use either one. So just remember those. Write them down. easybib.com or citationmachine.net. Okay, for um, today's purposes, I'm just going to use EasyBib. So I go to EasyBib.com, and it looks like this. So I see this bar here, and I have the option between using website, book, video, journal, database, etc. Obviously, I'm just going to use the website. Up here are different ways that you can cite it. We're learning the MLA way. So we're going to use MLA 8, which is the most recent version. So I'm going to go over to this article from ESPN. I'm going to copy the website. Then I'm gonna go back to EasyBib. I'm gonna paste the website right here and I'm gonna click the orange button that says cite it. So it's loading. All right, it looks like they found the article right here. See this gray box? So I'm gonna click the orange button that says cite this. They're gonna tell me what they found. Okay, so they found the website title. They found the article title, the publisher, that's awesome. Sometimes they can't find the publisher, so you have to go on the website and find it and type it in. Sometimes they can't find the author. This one's really great because it found everything. So I'm gonna click 
this orange button continue to the final step. All right, so if, for example, they didn't find the author, I would go back to the website, find the author's name, and I would type it in here, okay? If they didn't find the author, I would just click this trash can to get rid of this from my citation, if there was no author, for example, okay? I'm gonna click, scroll down and click Create Citation. And there it is, in that gray box, it made it really nice and pretty for me. I'm just gonna copy the citation. I'm going to go back to this paper, go down to the bottom. You can see I typed works cited here. Make sure that's at the top of the page. And I'm going to paste it. The last step is you have to make sure it's formatted. See, it's kind of got a little gray on it, so I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to click highlight and none so it gets rid of that. And I also need to make sure that this is Times New Roman font, 12-point font. And then the second line always has to be tabbed over. So I'm going to tab that over. And now I'm ready to find my next source. Okay, so that's how you make work cited and how you do an in-text citation. So you're just going to have to take some time and do that before you submit your final paper. So make citations for all of your quotes throughout your paper. So every time you use quotes like this, and then every site that you um, got a quote from needs to go down here on your work cited page. When you do a work cited page, let's say you have four, they need to go in alphabetical order by the, the first word. So if I have one where the first um, word is the author's last name is Adams, then I would put that one above the one that starts with Keating because it needs to be in alphabetical order. All right, so go ahead and start working on that.